Hello, my name is Luke Skrabowski and I'm lecturer in contemporary art and admissions tutor here in the Department of Art History at the University of Manchester. Thanks for considering us as one of your degree options. The course here offers you the opportunity to study with world-renowned experts in a vibrant international city with a thriving cultural scene. In what follows, I'm going to emphasise why the department is such a strong one and how it would contribute to your future. I appreciate that the current COVID-19 pandemic is an unsettling time for prospective students. We hope and anticipate that academic life will be much closer to normal in 2021 than currently and would like to reassure you that whatever the situation, we have plans in place to ensure that our applicants will continue to enjoy a world-class art history education at Manchester. In this session, I will introduce you to art history as a subject and explain why it is such a fascinating, broad-ranging one. I'll tell you more about Manchester's rich cultural heritage and dynamic cultural scene, and how they make the city such an attractive place to study art history. We'll cover the way that our courses are structured and the wide range of options that you have to tailor them to your interests, from the global renaissance to global contemporary art. We'll also explore the internships and other work experience opportunities that are on offer here. You'll come away with a sense of why Manchester is such a great place to study art history, as well as a deeper appreciation of the insights, skills and experiences that our students gain and put to work in their studies, their lives and their careers. So, why study art history? First and foremost, I suggest that the best reason to study art history is because you are passionate about art and hungry to know more about it, including the social and historical contexts from which particular works emerged. If you are engaged by a subject, you will enjoy it and be motivated to work hard at it. Doing a degree that you think you should, rather than one that you want to, is a surefire recipe for disengagement. But I know that many people won't have had the opportunity to study art history before and may not be that familiar with the subject. And I also understand that these are highly challenging economic and political times and that a degree in the UK comes at a financial cost, leading people to think long and hard about what to study. In what follows then, I'm going to set out the reasons why art history is a great degree choice, one that will appeal to both your heart and your head. Let me start by telling you a bit more about what it's all about. What does a study of art history involve? Broadly, we can say that history of art is concerned with understanding those uniquely fascinating cultural artefacts that we call artworks. More specifically, we can say that art historians study the production, circulation and reception of meanings and values in history, in particular national and international contexts, as mediated by artworks. So, to give you a concrete example, this might mean understanding the making, sale and display of easel paintings in the Netherlands in the 17th century. Think Rembrandt. But it can also mean understanding the cooking, free distribution and public consumption of a bowl of noodles cooked by a Thai contemporary artist in a London gallery. Think Rekrit Tiruvanija and 1990s relational art. The point here is that the nature, character and meaning of art changes profoundly over time in concert with different historical, geographical and intellectual context. Rembrandt and Rekrit were both leading practitioners of contemporary art in their day. Understanding how you get from making intensely worked self-portraits in oil to making highly flavoured Thai curries shared out amongst gallery visitors involves, to speak only at a general level, comprehending the development and the critique of the Enlightenment the rise and fall of European empires, the globalisation of capitalism, and the fundamental challenge mounted to the traditional artistic mediums of painting and sculpture by the historical and the neo-avant-garde of the 20th century, not least Dada and Neo-Dada's 
anti-artistic iconoclasm. And by the end of a degree in art history at Manchester, you would be fluent in all of these developments and debates. So, what kind of things am I going to learn to do if I take an art history degree? On the left-hand side of this slide, you can see a series of the domain-specific skills that are specific to the discipline of art history, as defined by the Quality Assurance Agency, which is an agency which regulates academic degrees in this country. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see how these skills are complemented by more general ones that are related to them. The specific art historical skills on the left that you gain here translate into the widely applicable general skills on the right that are on demand by a vast range of professional contexts, preparing you for a wide range of careers. So, what might you do with the skills you gain from an art history degree? Contrary to some things you may, may have heard, the answer to this question is a very wide range of things indeed, as you can see here. Traditionally, a high quality arts degree from a leading university opened the doors to almost any non-technical profession. And despite all the governmental promotion of STEM subjects recently, this remains the case. 75% of graduate schemes are open to graduates from any discipline. And art history has a range of careers directly associated with it in the cultural and heritage industries. Roles where you'd be putting your knowledge to direct use. Curators, gallerists, auctioneers, conservators, for example. But art history students also go on to a wide range of professional occupations, employing their skills in a less applied sense. Former students of mine, for example, have gone on to work as yes, curators, gallerists and auctioneers. But others have gone on to work as specialist arts insurers, management consultants, copywriters, social media executives and lawyers. Also, I think it's important uh, to emphasise that many of the new roles being created in the 21st century are in the creative industries such as advertising, design, fashion, film, music, publishing, the media, software development and computer gaming. A degree in art history equips you well for many roles within these industries. The creative industries sector is one of the largest within the UK economy, accounting for almost one in ten of all jobs, and is continuing to grow. And the creative industries are also some of the least susceptible to the coming wave of automation of white-collar work. And Manchester has a thriving creative industries sector. In these rapidly changing times, I also suggest that you think about the way in which your degree will help you to equip yourself for the professions that don't exist yet, as well as those that do. The most important skill of the 21st century is likely to be the ability to reinvent yourself, probably several times. Art has reinvented itself fundamentally throughout its history, and artists themselves are masters of reinvention. Studying artistic creativity and acquiring the types of skills and creativity, critical thinking and visual acuity that an art history degree offers will stand you in very good stead for the 21st century, not least in the wake of the significant, likely societal changes to come in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Why study art history in Manchester specifically? Let me emphasise a few things about the rich culture of this city and why it is such a great place to do your BA. Some of you may already know Manchester well, some may be less familiar with the city. Manchester was the cradle of the Industrial Revolution and is thus the original modern city. But it has also found a vibrant post-industrial life centred around business, culture, technology and sport. The city is large enough to have everything you could want, but still manageable enough to remain friendly and unalienating. Recent accolades for the city include being one of the top 25 best student cities in the world, having the best quality of life for young graduates, and being the best UK city to live in. Overall then, it is a fantastic place to study, as well as to stay on in, and many of our graduates do exactly that. The city is also home to a wide array of other important cultural institutions, a number of which you can see listed here. In particular, 
I would like to mention the factory. You can see an architectural visualization of the building here. This is a £130 million project designed by the renowned Dutch architect Rem Koolhaas and it will open on the site of the old Granada television studios in 2021. It is dedicated to large-scale creative work across dance, theatre, music, opera, the visual arts and popular culture and will welcome around a million visitors annually. It is conceived in the manner of the Tate Modern and will further consolidate Manchester's position as a major cultural centre. Outside the capital city, there is nowhere in the country with a greater density and range of cultural institutions, and Manchester is a much more manageable place to get involved with things than London. And all this is before we've even considered the major arts organisations based in the surrounding region, all of which we have taught in or run visits to, and many of which we have close links with. One of my former colleagues, for example, is now research curator at the Henry Moore Institute. Let me now move on to the academic environment here. Manchester was one of the founding members of the Russell Group, the association of the leading research intensive UK universities. It's the UK's equivalent of the Ivy League in the US, if you like. The university is top ranked, being comfortably in the top tier nationally and globally on all of the major rankings of which there are several. You may know this. Uh, these figures are based on the QS World University rankings from 2020. And, you know, one can put a lot of store in these rankings. I think uh, it's important to know the, the backstory to some of them. For example, the Guardian University Guide does not take account of a university's research strength, for example. The university has produced 25 Nobel Prize winners. To give some context, that's pretty good compared to many nation states, 25 being more than Italy's 23, and only one less than Russia with 26. And it's this quality of research that translates into extremely high quality research led teaching here. If you study at Manchester, you will benefit from the way in which cutting edge research deeply informs the courses that our academics offer. Manchester also mixes the best of a city university and a campus university. The city is on the university's doorstep with all the dynamism this imparts to university life. But the campus is self-contained and set along the Oxford Road, allowing you to focus intensely when you need to. The university is large, giving you all the benefits of scale in terms of the range of opportunities on offer here and contacts to make. But our department is mid-sized, ensuring you get to know your whole student cohort and your lecturer as well. And a £1 billion campus master plan programme is bringing the whole of the university's estate up to a world-class level. Manchester is also incredibly well provided in terms of libraries. The University of Manchester Library holds 4 million printed books and manuscripts. It is one of just five national research libraries. These libraries play a major part in the national research infrastructure and accommodate collections of international importance. The University Library has extensive digital holdings and has already upgraded its digital provision in light of the current circumstances. The University's John Ryland's Library, a neo-Gothic masterpiece, has been called one of the world's greatest libraries. It holds a collection spanning 5,000 years and is home to an astonishing array of works, over a million books, maps, manuscripts, visual materials and archives. In particular, the Ryland Special Collections offer a rich resource for art history students, holding outstanding collections of rare books, manuscripts, prints and archives. The collections cover areas as diverse as Renaissance print culture and post-World War II avant-garde art movements. You can really use this collection to do fascinating original research and many of our students do so for their BA dissertation. And we also have a friendly departmental art history library with a dedicated team and an active buying policy ensuring all course texts and the latest research are available to you. 
this is not something that you necessarily get at other Russell Group universities and is a real asset. Complementing our libraries is the Alan Gilbert Learning Common, a state-of-the-art, student-focused study and learning centre at the heart of the Oxford Road campus. It offers flexible study spaces throughout the building, as well as social meeting spaces, a large cafe and Wi-Fi access. It is also open day and night for when you need to burn the midnight oil on an essay deadline or are deeply involved in a passion project. We are also in the highly fortunate position of having our own world-class gallery. The Whitworth, located in Whitworth Park, is part of the University of Manchester. It holds an important collection and puts on major exhibitions by leading international artists, including Steve McQueen, William Kentridge and the Rux Media Collective, to name just three recent major shows. It represents a unique level of quality and ambition for a university-owned gallery in the UK. It's much more like some of the museums associated with major US universities, such as the Fog at Harvard. The Whitworth's outgoing director, Maria Balshaw, now runs the Tate and is an honorary professor in the department. The new director of the Whitworth, Alistair Hudson, has been leading an innovative reconceptualization of the role of the public gallery as what he terms a useful institution, exploring the potential for art to become a direct force for promoting social change. You can see that Whitworth is really at the heart of the national artistic culture of the UK. And the gallery's fantastic collection, archive and study space can all be used by our students, allowing you to work directly with works of art and important historical documents in a delightful, tranquil setting. The Grade 1 listed Tabley House is also part of the University. It holds important historical collections of fine and decorative arts and is a significant example of neoclassical architecture in its own right. It's also a venue that we regularly integrate into our teaching and which our students can use in their research. Manchester then is not only about industrial modernity and our facilities offer us major resources for teaching right across the historical spectrum of the discipline. I would like to conclude this section by emphasising that all of these academic strengths lead to the employability of our graduands and graduates being second to none. The University of Manchester is the most targeted university by the UK's top 100 graduate employers. 86% of students are in professional or managerial roles within six months of graduation. And our career service here focuses on your needs from the moment that you join the university. You are given an appointment at the Career Centre in the early days of your degree and we have a number of staff who specialise in different fields, allowing you to receive tailored and personalised advice. In what may well still be a tough job market in the coming years, this type of institutional reputation and cachet is important and will really help your prospects. In this final section of my talk, I'm going to tell you more about the character of our department. The strengths of our department, of which I'm proud to be a member, can be summarised as follows. I will talk through each of these in turn. In the last National Research Assessment of Research Quality, the department was ranked in the top three in the country. 85% of its research activity was judged to be world-leading or internationally excellent. All of our faculty are experts in their fields with established international reputations for their scholarship. Faculty members regularly convene specialist conferences and symposia, all of which our students are welcome to attend and are encouraged to do so. The department also runs Whitworth Studies and Departmental Research Talk series featuring leading scholars. Our prestigious endowed Pilkington Professorship brings some of the most esteemed art historians in the world to Manchester. Recent Pilkington professors to have visited included T.J. Clark, Griselda Pollock and Claire Bishop. What does all this mean for you as a student? It means a vibrant and dynamic research culture that informs your teaching, putting you at the leading edge of the discipline. Here you can see a selection of recently published books, journal special issues and exhibition catalogues from members of the department. 
They cover the full historical and geographical spectrum of the discipline, from medieval to contemporary art, and from Europe to South Asia. Our teaching at Manchester is research-led. All of our staff are researchers who teach and teachers who research. This leads us to regularly refresh our teaching with innovative new course offerings. Recent examples include new courses on the global renaissance and global contemporary art, for example. We've also recently made new faculty appointments in non-Western art, ensuring that we cover a full range of global artistic cultures in addition to our historical strengths in Western art. We make active use of local cultural institutions, teaching in front of real artworks whenever we can. Turning now to our courses in detail, we offer a varied range of BA degrees consisting of single honours, joint honours and flexible honours routes. None of our honours degrees requires prior study of art history and all teach you everything you need to know to excel. Single honours remains our most popular course option and focuses exclusively on the study of art history throughout your degree. Joint honours degrees allow you to split your studies 50-50 with either English literature, history or a modern European language. All of our joint honours degrees have been carefully constructed for the intellectual synergies between the respective disciplines. And your final option is a flexible honours degree, which you can opt for after you successfully gain a place on our single honours degree when you start the course. This option allows you to pursue a second subject in another arts, language or cultures discipline, subject to academic approval and availability. It thus allows you to pursue a major and a minor for your degree, somewhat akin to a US style liberal arts degree. All of our courses are taught through a mixture of lectures, seminars and individual supervision. In your first and second years, course units are usually taught by a combination of lectures and seminars, in your third year, teaching is principally undertaken by extended seminar, offering you the opportunity to explore and develop ideas in discussion with your tutor and other students. Courses are assessed through a combination of coursework and written exams. Coursework consists of essays, presentations, but also other innovative modes of assessment, including, for example, constructing an exhibition proposal. You will receive three hours of contact time per course unit per week, as well as additional bespoke contact time with both your academic advisor and your academic support tutor. You have allocated slots and you can also make an appointment to visit your academic advisor or academic support tutor when you would like. Let me now talk you through the structure of our single honours degree to give you a fuller sense of the course. In your first year, core compulsory courses introduce you to the discipline and its methods. Ice Age to Baroque and Rococo to Now introduce the full historical range of art history as a discipline. Art Spaces introduces you to the way in which art has been displayed over time, with particular consideration to the birth and development of the museum as an institution. An art history tutorial is a topic-led course that also focuses on workshopping the skills that you need for university level academic work. For example, using a research library, both online and offline, building a research bibliography, learning how to footnote correctly. All of these are core skills to produce university level academic work. Year one serves as an orientation introduction year and your awarded marks are not ultimately carried through into your final degree classification. In your second year, you take a mixture of core and optional lecture-based courses, building your competence in the discipline, but also allowing you to tailor your programme of study to your individual interests. So we have core courses in the theory of art, and in collecting museum and display, but a number of optional modules alongside the European field trip. In your second year, you get to choose three optional courses and you can see a range of them here. What you can see is a representative selection. The exact availability will vary from year to year depending on faculty members 
uh, research leave and new courses being offered. But these have all been very recently taught in the department. And in your second year, you'll also take the European field trip course, which is built around a fully funded study visit to a European city of major cultural significance. Paris, Rome, Berlin, Barcelona, Vienna. You undertake a number of preparatory lectures and seminars before the trip. And on the trip itself, you get to explore the city's museums and galleries, guided expertly by members of the faculty. You also have time to explore the city's culture more widely. And this is always something our students enjoy. You conclude the course by writing an extended assessed essay on an aspect of the city's artistic culture that particularly interests you, working closely with a faculty member to develop it. The course is always highly popular and allows students to experience art deeply informed by its wider cultural and historical context. In your final year, you take four optional seminar focused courses over the year and write a dissertation on a topic of your choosing, working very closely with your academic advisor to select and refine your topic and methodological approach. At this point in your education, you work with your tutors on courses that are heavily informed by their own specialist expertise, really getting to the cutting edge of the discipline. Again, you can see a number of these research led, highly research led courses here. And this is a representative selection. The exact availability varies from year to year, depending on faculty research leave and new courses being offered. But these have all been taught very recently in the department. And you can see they cover the full historical geographical range of the discipline, as well as the kind of latest methodological innovations in thinking about the art from these periods around the world. Regardless of your choice of single or joint or flexi honours, you also have the opportunity to study abroad or undertake a placement year in professional practice. Studying abroad could form a core part of your course if you are taking joint honours with the modern language, but there are opportunities to study abroad for a semester, whatever your course choice. You can spend time at one of our international partner institutions. And if you're on a three-year course, your time abroad would take place in year two, but you need to apply for it in year one. If you're interested to experience more about the world of work before graduating, you can elect to undertake a placement year in professional practice before returning to the university for the final year of your study. You are supported in this by a course placement lead, but are required to find a placement yourself. And all work must be verified as being at professional level by the university. You'd start looking for a placement in year one and start after year two. You then return to complete your year three courses, effectively undertaking four-year degree including the year placement year. As a department we are also increasingly integrating opportunities for gaining professional art world experience into our degree at Manchester through a series of recurring internships open to our students. These internships are taken concurrently with your studies and have been designed to integrate effectively with them. We partner with the Peggy Guggenheim Collection in Venice to send two outstanding second year students to spend the summer as interns at this world famous collection of modern art located on the Grand Canal. This highly regarded internship programme introduces students to many aspects of museum work while providing a foundation in issues surrounding the exhibition and display of modern art, as well as an introduction to the visual culture of Venice. There are two year-long part-time placements available at the Whitworth Gallery. These placements rotate across three departments, collections, marketing and textiles, and involve a range of activities. And there are also two internships available at the Castlefield Gallery each year, one per semester. Interns get to work with the marketing and communications team, lead, learning about and contributing to exhibition publicity, interpretation, signage, documentation and social media. 
we continue to develop our internships offering and expect to offer additional opportunities over the course of our three-year degree. So, how do you join us? Here you can see the grade tariffs for our degree courses. A BB for our single honours course and a range from AAA to ABB for our joint honours courses, some of which are highly competitive as can be seen from the high tariffs. Please note that we recognise that applicants often achieve higher than their predicted grades. So we will also consider applicants who are predicted to achieve one grade below the entry requirement. Please also note that the upper offer will be made in almost all cases, unless you are studying for an EPQ, where the lower offer will be made in addition to your achieving a grade A at EPQ, or if you qualify for a lower offer on widening participation in higher education ground. On the latter, please note the University's Manchester Access and Manchester Distance Access schemes for those students from the state sector who live in areas with historically low progression to higher education. Now, this is in Manchester for the Manchester Access Scheme and in the UK more generally for the Manchester Distance Access Scheme. These schemes allow you to take 25 hours of online pre-university tuition um, and then benefit from a one grade boundary reduction on your offer. If you think you might qualify for either of these schemes, based as I said on living in an area with historically low progression to higher education, then do look at the relevant web pages for more details uh, that are listed here on this slide. Let me conclude by emphasising that Manchester is a fantastic place to study art history and indeed to stay on afterwards, if you so choose. If you would like more information, that you've not heard about in this presentation and cannot find online, then do email me as admissions tutor or for more procedural inquiries, contact our admissions support officer. So email is also listed here. You might also be interested to use this online chat app called Unibuddy to talk to a current student at Manchester. The web URLs here. Although please note that the student you speak to won't necessarily be an art historian as this is a centralised service focused on the university experience more generally. Do also keep in touch with developments in the department through our website and social media channels. You can see the addresses here and they're all also accessible from the main departmental website. Thanks very much for listening. I wish you your family and friends well, and look forward to welcoming you to our department in the future.